Because they don't realize they're bound by their sinful nature. They're a slave to it. So, so Israel behaving like Sodom and Gomorrah, through his prophet Amos, he gave them specific instructions to right their wrongs, to rectify their transgression. Okay, let's make our way to Malachi chapter 3 because up until this point, some of us, the only tithing scriptures we ever heard were in Malachi 3. Malachi 3, 8, to around verse 12, and that was about it. So let's look at what Malachi 3, 8 and beyond says. Ask ourselves a few questions as a result of reading these verses and see where we go from here. Malachi 3, 8 says what? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But, but you say, you, you ask the question, well, in what way have we robbed you? And God responds in tithes and offerings. Well, as a result of robbing me, says God, he says, you're, you're cursed with a curse. If you've robbed me, wait a minute now, it says, you've robbed the whole nation. You've robbed me... Th- You've robbed the whole nation. That right there, that's a clue that God is talking to a specific group. Verse 10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I were not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing that there would not be room enough to receive. And guess what else I'm going to do? I rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he won't destroy the fruit of your ground nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field says the Lord of hosts and guess what else all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land says the Lord of hosts I'm going to tell you right now all of that sounds real good I like how that sounds I I like the idea of of the windows of heaven being opened for me in my life I, I, I I I like having such blessing poured out on me Doesn't that sound good to you? Such blessing that there's not room enough to receive it? And then the devourer is rebuked for my sake. He can't touch the fruit of my ground and nations will call me blessed. I like how that sounds. And you're telling me I can experience that by bringing tithes and offerings to the storehouse? Shoot, sign me up for that. Except who was he talking to? He wasn't just talking to Israel. Generally, that is. He was talking to a specific group within Israel. Let's let's back up and and see if we can find who he was talking to. And then what we also want to do is we want to look at biblical pattern. Got to follow the pattern. There's a pattern, and and it goes back to the second chapter of Malachi. But but let's, let's, let's point out something that we read here that would be a clue. That God is talking to a specific group. Look at what he says here in in verse 9 once again. He says, you've robbed me. Whoever he's talking to, he's telling them that they robbed God and they robbed an entire nation. Now, that doesn't sound like the church. Now, I'm going to have to reiterate this every week. Because I know some people, they bless their souls. They don't know how to handle this. I said before that I did not want to teach this eight years ago until my father gave me the green light. Now, now, whether dad fully, whether dad fully grasped what I shared with him or not, I, I can't say. I do know this, he, he, he lived according to the laws of sowing and reaping, and there was much harvest in his life. I know that for sure. But when, when I first shared it with him, he wasn't feeling it, and so I kept my mouth shut. When he gave me the green light, then I went with it. Now, now remember, everything that he taught about tithes, I taught about tithes. Just as adamant. And, and, and every and every spiritual child of his, every every co-laborer of his, especially in word of faith circles, this is what we taught. Mal- Malachi country, right here, chapter three, verses eight through twelve. And 
like I taught what my spiritual father taught me and he t he taught what his spiritual father taught him and, and, and his spiritual father taught what his spiritual father taught him it goes back a long way. And, and, and if you think about it, without doing any extra research on it, like why would you oppose it? Why would I oppose the windows of heaven being opened and such blessing being poured out on me that there's not room enough to receive it? Why would I buck against that? Well, why would I? Why would I argue against someone about the devourer being rebuked for my sake, so that he doesn't destroy the fruit of my ground? Why would I combat that? Why would I contend with nations calling me blessed? <laughs> 